All right, so I'm doing this video because I've had a couple of people reach out to me and ask about detailing a map in Radiant, and they are new to Radiant, so uh, they don't know how to work everything. So I want to make this video to show people how I detail. In particular, someone was asking for um, how I did a hole in the wall and how they can go about making a hole in the wall look decent. And I always tell people it's really easy and radiant once you know the tools. And that is because, especially for someone like me, who is not an artist, doesn't like UV wrap unwrapping and all that. And my, uh, the great thing about radiant, it does the textures for you. So you don't have to do all that uh, stuff that you have to in Maya. So it does all the texturing for you, which is... Why I like Radiant so much is because it's just such a powerful tool. But right now I'm just bringing these corners together. Uh, and that helps with texturing and then also optimization. I recorded this video once, but it ran into audio issues. Uh, so I'm going to go over some small details other than blending as well. Uh, when you create your Geo, uh, you want to caulk it. Alt-Shift-C. And also I'd like to clarify, I may skip over how to do a specific button because this is not a controls tutorial. This is more of a detailing tutorial. So I'm going in this with a mind frame that you guys already know how to operate Radiant. But I'll try to make it to where I can help you as good as I can uh, or if I remember. So what caulking does, it will not register or render that face in game so if you are making some complex geo in the game view it will not render that face and that's obviously for optimization you don't want to render faces that don't need to be rendered uh, so like these where these two corners meet instead of just applying a default texture to it and then there will be a texture in here rendering and the player will never see it so you want to do that when the player will never see it um, all right, but let's get going with this. We'll just click that. And I'm going to do this really quickly because last time it was kind of a long video and sometimes I can go on tangents uh, and, and go off topic. So I'm just looking for a texture. And, and this isn't a detailing. Like, I'm not going to go into, like, detailing, like, adding trim. I'm just going to show you the things you can do while making a hole in the wall. And I'm currently using the 8 grid. I, I like using that a lot. And also, I uh, like to clarify, you should stay on grid as much as possible early on. Uh, higher grid is better in the beginning because it makes things easier. And then once you get into more finite details, you obviously need to go into a lower grid, which is fine. Um, and also, I wanted to go over there is lit detail and lit decal uh, decals are transparent they go over base texture i don't think it's going to show properly if i maybe go like this yeah so you'll be able to see through it in game so you want to make sure that you're using a default or a base texture lit detail Otherwise, you're going to see through it. And the reason there's uh, decals is because of blending. You can make it look like the paint is chipping away and whatever. All right, so I'm rambling now. So let's uh, get into the hole in the wall. Now I'm going to make this quite small just because and uh, not accurate at all in size. So right here, we'll just say this is a hole in the wall. Want to go get some plaster or whatever the case may be for you. I'm just going over the way that I do it. And also, I'd like to clarify that too. There are multiple ways of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. And also, the way that I see Treyarch doing it. Because the mod tools, what I did when I first got these mod tools installed on my computer. Is it comes with two default maps, which is which are combine 
and there's a zombies map it comes with. Uh, the giant, I believe I could be wrong, but it comes with two maps. What, what you want to do, especially if you're newer to the tools, is go in there and just start tearing stuff apart. That's exactly what I did. I got into the to the maps that they've made and just to see how they do things and to pick up on new techniques. Uh, and of course you can make this different shape other than square so you can uh, cut this into blocks or however you want. Then uh, use the E tool for edge or whatever. But I'm just uh, showing you very quickly. You can do all the detailing yourself how you like it. And you want to make this obviously look a lot better than what I'm doing, but I just want this video to be a lot quicker. And I'm to copy, control C, control V. You could also do spacebar, which will take it off the grid. It kind of like makes it hop around. And Radiant does have a scale tool for their models, but I it doesn't scale how you would see it inside of Unity or Unreal Engine, where you can scale on different axes. And that sometimes it will Z fight. Some models do and some models don't. I don't know why these ones do. Um, but some models you can get away with. Um, you can get away with overlapping them. And some you can't. I'm not sure why that is. But yeah, so you want to do a terrain patch. And you want this to be one terrain patch all the way around the hole. Uh, you don't want to create multiple terrain patches and then kind of just slob them together. So you want to go into the vert vertice mode, hit V, uh, select two verts, control shift A to add a row of verts. It'll always add a row in between the two that you selected. So I selected this one and this one and it's as it adds a row here. And typically I like to do it like I'm doing now, like I'm showing you. I used to have three um, rows, and that way you can use this one for the to line it up with the model. And then on the middle rows, I always have it lined up on the line. Let me just move these real quick. And you want to do this, you want to take your time on this part, because if you have like it like that, let me go ahead and get this real quick. So if you have, when I blend it, I'll show you, but uh, when you blend it, when you blend a decal texture, it'll float in air. And then if there's nothing there, obviously the player will see a floating plaster texture. So you want to line this up as good as you can. Like I said, I'm rushing because you will take the time, you'll take more time than what I'm doing. And you want to row line the second row up with the brush and the model and that's where the blending will take place it's a lot of finite detail like this uh, takes a lot of time to get it to look really good and you want to just keep and uh, by the way alt select two verts and um, press alt o to extrude that area. And if a vert is off the grid, like this one, you want to hit Control G. It'll have to the grid.
And then when you finally meet up on the circle, you want to press W to weld the verts together. All right, I was trying to figure out why the decal or the patch was not showing up on the viewport, and that was because I had these on the decal, so it was not rendering this right here. So I had to change that. So now that you have this covered the entire window, and like I said, this is real sloppy, you want to take your time. You want to hit G to bring up the alpha editing um, window. And this is the value. You want to put the outer ring all the way to zero and apply. And that's what that does, blends. And to select an entire row of uh, verts without selecting one by one, just shift click on a vert until you get to the one you want. And then also do that to the inner uh, part of the circle. And then bring up the surface inspector, LMAP or natural, whichever one looks better. And then you got that. That's starting to look like a decent hole in the wall. Let's, you always want to texture what the player can see. So we're going to do that. Middle mouse click to do that. And we'll just give it that for so you can see something there. So this, uh, and then also to add even more detail, you can add wood debris. We'll just use these. I like using these. For the middle area. And then for these right here, these ledges, since the player will be able to see those, uh, we'll just go look up, look for something quickly. We'll just do that. That looks like it caught fire. Of course, you'll take more time than what I'm doing. I just want to show you the things that you can do. You could also select a model that you have in the world and double click on a new one and it will change it to that. Control C, Control V, mirror on the Y. Sometimes models freak out when you do that. So you have multiples selected. We'll just uh, do that for now. Then you can also, they have two by fours up here that you can use as well. There are, and then uh, for the other side, obviously the other side will be damaged too. You can just copy paste this plaster. You want it to be on the edge, that way it blends better. And then obviously you want to go in here and rotate these differently because I don't know about you, but I've never seen a hole where both so sides are symmetrical from whatever happened. So uh, you want to go in here and change this stuff up as well. But for the sake of the video, I'm not going to do that. But just to make that clear, you should. Of course, you don't have to. There's no law on doing that, but it'll be very odd to the player while destruction is symmetrical. And then you can also add an FX, like fire, um, fire, debris. Uh, we'll just do ground rubble. Put it in here. I get caught fire, go into game view. It's a little much. We'll just go out those embers. Stop and then play. It's still really big. There's one that I like for this. Let's see if I can find it quickly.
So obviously that doesn't look good. We'll uh No the barrel is for what it Okay, those are fire emmers. I I use those as well where I put the fire. But yeah, okay, you get the the general idea. There's uh there's a flame that fits that better. I think I have them the FX hitting. Yeah, I think. It might be this one, it's a lot smaller. Oh, those are emmered. Okay, that one's a lot better. That's the one I like for that. So you can do that and then you could add smoke and then on top of the emmers. Oh, that's the light. That's the light too. There we go. So you could do that like all around. You know, start to look really good. Obviously, you don't want the whole thing on fire because. But yeah, um, you could do things like that. And so this could be a zombie spawn area. You don't want to texture this because the player will not be able to see that. And also, what I like to, or what I notice, is when people do these zombie spawn rooms like this. I personally like when they give it more character, like let's say have a hallway right here. The player obviously will not see this inside, but we'll just say like a hallway right here. I'm doing this very quickly. I would make it a lot better, obviously. And then you want to uh, do the same that I did over here, and that's this. Oh, deleted the wrong thing. Do that all around. That delete that wall I did. But and then make a doorway here and make the zombie spawner you could just say that's a door roughly size um, but you could say the zombie spawner's here the player can't see it and it'll come around and then find the window and go after the player that way it gives it more character instead of it just spawning right here it makes it look bigger than what it is and there's more character to this this area uh for the zombie spawner of you know not knowing what's back there where are the zombies coming from it just makes it have more character um instead of them being able to see obviously you take your time on it more than i did then you can also Control C, Control V, this, and then add in some cracks, uh, and you could just layer the stuff. It's one thing that makes these maps look really well is layering. You want to know how to layer blends, layer textures, and just add nice-looking things. I'm gonna just get something. It's probably a concrete one, but yeah, and then you can go and edit each one. Uh, however you want to make it look more realistic and just kind of make a crack come way out here look like collateral damage instead of it just being very right there like it's cracking the whole the whole wall the whole wall might cave in just small details like that uh, and then you can also copy paste these and bring them out That's a little, that's really thick, so you can go to a smaller grid. And this is for the the very finite detailing. So you don't want to do this stuff if you're still blocking out or playtesting the map because if you need to make a change and you do this, it's uh, 
gonna be rough on you. And you can just actually select all of these and make them one brush. No need to have three brushes right there. Stuff like that, and you can put trim up here too. There is some trim. Might not be called wallpaper. I think you can do stuff like that to make it make your map that much better looking. And you got to watch out because some of them are decals. And like I said, decals are transparent if there is no base texture that it is rendering to. So you can see how this wall looks so much better than just being a plain wall. You can also do that um, just for some simple... Uh, it doesn't have to be a zombie spawn. You could just do that just to add more detail to your map and make it look a lot better. You could also... Um, let me get rid of these real quick and just make a hole, hole in the wall. Alt shift C to caulk and we could just say wood and just, just for Quick sake, obviously that looks terrible. Then you can go back to your filter and bring your models back and just make it kind of look like a hole in the wall, not all the way through. But yeah, so you could do a lot with this tool, even if you're not an artist. And it's crazy how strong the tool set is. So I know I kind of went on some more rambling, but uh, I had some people reach out to me, like I said, and ask for some tips and advice on the tool. If you guys want to know any anything else, please ask, and I, I don't mind making a video to help out. Um, or just reach out to me, and I'll try to get back to you. And if uh, there's multiple people asking the same question, I'll just make another video. But peace out.